Okay, so I'm Max Bruning, and because of a uh, screw-up, um, I'm redoing the uh, first hour or so of uh, the uh, talk that I gave, and that was basically on uh, Solaris drivers. So um, we're going to be doing three things, and actually I, I think you'll find out in the talk in retrospect that we're only really going to do two things. We're going to look at... Uh, kind of a general overview of drivers and we're going to look at a bit of debugging. I'm going to do the debugging session kind of live um, using um, well, basically going through some bugs that are on my machine, some crash dumps that are on the machine. Um, so as far as what we're going to cover here, uh, talk a little bit about driver, kernel, architecture, DDI, DKI it's called. Um, we're going to go through briefly, quickly through a simple driver, um, talk a little bit about interrupt handling, uh, device register handling, uh, DMA routines, APIs for DMA, uh, briefly about fault management, I think there's one page or two pages on timers and setting up additional threads in the driver. Um, I do not get into the streams overview or the GLD or SCSI, SCSI overview or USB because basically at this point when I got through with the timers and threads we were close to two hours plus into uh, the talk and um, we switched immediately to debugging and that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, the material that you have here uh, does have a few pages on streams, GLDB3, SCSA, and USB, um, but the talk won't. So, so the idea here is um, I'd like to get a, you to have enough information so that you can build, install, test, implement, and debug a driver um, in all in one hour. Um, <laughs> we're not going to get quite that far, but at least we might get you started. Uh, there are some good references. I want to point out the uh, Writing Device Driver Guide is very complete. It's well written um, and has lots of example pieces of code. Um, highly recommend it. Um, the best reference is un undoubtedly the source code. Um, and of course, you have to read it, have fun. And uh, there are man pages um, for, um, well, first of all, 7D has manual pages for quite a few of the devices and usually these discuss uh, type of device it is, special characteristics of the device and driver and usually iOctals. Uh, 9E is driver entry points so user does an open call and some open routine gets called in the driver. 9E has man manual pages for these entry points. 9F is kernel functions that a driver can use. There's about 700 functions, uh, maybe a bit more in 9F. 9P is properties. I'm not going to talk about them at all. 9S is kernel data structures that uh, drivers can use. So, on here. So, what we're going to do is look at an example first. And we're going to look at an example for Dev Dummy. This is a driver that does nothing uh, but does it correctly, hopefully. I'm looking at the font here, and this doesn't look like the font. Oh, it's PDFs. What is going on with this font? All right. Um, so um, the idea here is I'm going to show the minimum amount of code needed for a driver on Solaris. A little bit more, but not much. So this will be the 100 plus lines of code. There is also, I should mention, a minimal driver in the uh, driver tutorial that was mentioned on the previous page. You can take a look at that if you um, one another example. And the idea here is that if you've got this minimal piece of code, all you have to do is figure out your hardware and add the hardware pieces. And that's the hard part. Um, and I'm not going to use any of the frameworks that are available, streams or GLD or USB or SCSA frameworks, um, because that adds more complexity. So here is the usual header files you'll find in the driver and I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, function prototypes. Um, okay, well, yeah, so I'm trying to show the complete driver and uh, we're going to have, this driver has an open function, read, write, so it supports the open system call, the read system call, the write system call. Um, 
get into, I won't talk about, and attach and detach, we'll take a, a brief look at in a few minutes. Um, typically a driver has a state, and you'll typically have state on a per instance basis. So if you've got four of the same controllers, you have what are called four instances, and you'll have, you'll have a separate state structure that maintains state information for each instance. What do you have in the state structure? Well, whatever you want. Whatever you need to uh, maintain state about the device. Whatever that means. Um, if there is such a thing as minimal state, it's this uh, data structure called a devinfo structure. And um, the devinfo structure is a, it's an opaque structure that gets passed into various routines in your driver by the kernel. Um, and they, the dev infrastructures are used to maintain something called the device tree, where the device tree is basically um, a geographical representation of the devices on your system. Um, so if you wanted to look at the device tree, for instance, um, you could, well, you don't need to run Emacs to do it, but you could, um, run, uh, for instance, PRTConf. And I just fat fingered that. So PRTConf, if you just run PRTConf, and why not I'll use a minus uppercase D here, um, the PRTConf basically with the minus uppercase D shows the drivers for each device and indentation here indicates that a device is connected to the device that it's indented under. So if you're looking at this output, uh, I've got an ISA bus and uh, hooked into the ISA bus is an I8042 for the keyboard. And I've got a PCI bus and uh, various devices plugged into the PCI bus. Um, down here near the bottom, UHCI, Universal um, Host Controller Interface, USB, um, USB to PCI uh, converter. Um, so various devices here, but the indentation shows geographically where, where the device is on the system. And each, the idea here is that each line of this output basically has a dev info. So, so the dev info stuff is arranged as a tree and um, it is opaque, but there are some fields in the dev info that you can get access to by using uh, APIs that are provided. And we'll go back to this guy. And okay, so the other thing on this page is this thing called uh, the static void star scale state. The, um, Driver framework in Solaris provides a way to help you to manage per instance state. You can use this or you can do it on your own. It's up to you. There is, uh, and if you look in, in, in Open Solaris, you're going to find some drivers that use this, uh, it's a, the set of routines is DDI soft state init, DDI soft state alloc, DDI soft state get. So there's some drivers that use these routines. Uh, and let the, the driver framework handle the state. There are other drivers that do came malloc and manage the state on their own. And which one's better, who knows? I'm not gonna get into that. Um, okay. Now, at this point, um, we're gonna look at some of the data structures that you need in the driver, and one of them is a CBOPS. And what I'd like to do is, I hope that's not the one I want, is uh, draw a little picture here so you have um, a structure called a mod linkage. I guess this pen is a little fat. It's really fat, isn't it? It's too fat. Whoops. Just a second. This is see. This is why it took an hour because I screwed around with a stupid tablet. I do it all over again, but I'm going to make the the pen thinner. Looks like uh, somebody's finger painting. All right, come on.
Uh, there's another way to erase. No, I didn't know that. With with GIMP, there's another way. What is it? Control X. Oh, Z erases. Oh, oh you know, I didn't know that. That's great. See, I don't really know GIMP. And I'm not very good with the tablet either, but, but it's working. All right, so let's bring this down to here. There, how's that? Oh, I like that much better. Oops. So you have this thing called a mod linkage, which we'll see in a second. And it has a pointer in it to something called a mod LDRV. And this has a pointer to something called a DevOps. And this has a pointer to the structure called a CVOps. And basically, all drivers have these four structures. The CVOps is basically entry points into the driver, open, close, read, write, uh, et cetera. DevOps is for basically configuration of instances of the device, attach function, detach function, that sort of thing. Model DRV, um, basically is a structure that is used by the kernel runtime linker to identify the driver, the module, the kernel module as a driver, and mod linkage is used by the kernel runtime linker to link the driver into the rest of the system. And here is an example, CVOps um, with open, uh, close. Now, uh, the close function here, I'm using null dev. Null dev is a function that basically returns success, doesn't do anything. Uh, the strategy routine is used with uh, something called a block driver, and block drivers are basically SCSI or, or, um, or IDE targets, disks, and we're not going to look at them at all here. Uh, but a, no, a routine no dev is a routine that returns an error, so if somebody called the strategy routine, it would just return an error. Null dev is just a routine that says, okay, whatever you want, you're, it's successful. Um, the print function is something that I cannot find being called anywhere within the kernel. Uh, but it's meant for block devices and it's supposed to print out uh, diagnostic messages. And I can't see anything calling it, but I'd, I would do whatever anyone else would do uh, with um, this function, which is write it, which just calls uh, basically print out. Uh, the dump function is used for uh, if you're going to dump panic dump, uh, dumps to the device, no, we're not doing it. Uh, here's a read routine, write routine. IOctal, if you wanted to support IOctals on the device. DevMap, MMap, and SegMap are in support of MMap, the MMap system call, and the MMap entry point in this structure in the CBOPS is basically obsolete. Uh, so if you wanted to support MMap, you really need to write a DevMap and SegMap function. And no, we're not going to cover them here. Poll, if you wanted to support poll, the no ch poll routine basically is no dev, or maybe it's null dev. But probably read the manual page. Uh, a property operations routine I'm not going to get into. If the, the device is um, in support of streams, you'll have a non-null stream tab function. Um, the new and MP flags are actually not optional flags. <laughs> new means that the driver will work um, on SunOS 5.x. If you didn't have that flag, it would mean it would work on SunOS 4.x, and we don't support that anymore. And the MP flag says that your driver is thread safe. So all you have to do is specify that flag, using the same bad joke as before. You specify the DNR bar MP flag and your driver is thread safe. You don't have to do any. No. Obviously, it's up to you to make your driver thread safe. Uh, a revision number, this actually was added fairly recently to the structure. Um, what we do with these structures is we don't change them. We might add to them. We may make fields obsolete, but we do not change them because we want to maintain compatibility going forward. So a binary, a driver written several years ago, the binary should still work. Um, so they've added a revision number to the structure and they've added asynchronous read and write routines, which I'm not going to cover. Go on. Okay, so here's the DevOps structure. 
Um, this has a revision number, a reference count which should be zero. Um, and in fact, uh, the reference count number is used by the uh, driver framework in the system to determine whether or not the driver can be unloaded and detached. And it should be zero. There's a manual page which basically says set this to zero and don't use it otherwise. Um, get info function, which we're not going to get into. Identify, which has been obsolete since 2.6 Solaris. A probe function, which you do not want to make no dev because then your driver doesn't attach because it decide, the system decides you don't have one of the devices. Um, there are some devices that need probe functions and they would do the normal thing. Um, map, map in the device registers, try to touch them, and if the device is there, return success, yes, the device is there, and if not, return no, the device isn't here. Um, an attach function called for each instance, which basically um, maps in device registers um, for a particular instance of the device, uh, registers any interrupt handler or handlers for the device. Um, what else does it Oh, It may do some DMA setup for the device. Basically, the attach function, when it finishes, um, the idea is that somebody, a user, could open the device and start reading and writing it. Up until that point, until the attach function has done, that, done its initialization, basically there's no way to really talk with the hardware because the hardware has not been initialized, at least the particular instance that's being attached. Detach undoes everything that attach does. The reset function, as far as I can tell, has never been used and is always no dev. You have a CB ops pointer, which we just looked at. Bus ops. Okay, so if I go back to the, um, for instance, the PRT comp output. So this guy here, this PCI guy, there is, th this is what's called a Nexus node. There are devices that plug into it from below, and there is a driver for this, and it's called a Nexus driver. Okay, and basically, Nexus drivers use the bus off structures. Um, Nexus drivers are not documented. Um, well, that, it's not entirely true, really. A, a, a USB to PCI adapter, UHCI or EHCI or OHCI, these things are documented and they are also Nexuses. SCSI host adapter is also a documented Nexus, but uh, PCI to PCI bridge, not documented as far as what you would do in a Nexus driver. Um, the um, power, man power routine, if you're going to support power management on the device, and the QS routine, which is used as part of, I, I believe it was hot plugging. This actually, this QS stuff is very new. Um, in the last couple of months, I think. Um, and this guy is not supporting, well, this driver isn't supporting QS because it doesn't need it. It's basically a pseudo device. Okay. Um, you have mod LDRV, which points back up to the DevOps. That's the SCALOPS field in here. And this usually contains a string identifying the device and a version number for the driver. You can get this string by doing mod info and the mod linkage structure, which points to the mod LDRV. And we'll keep going here. So underbar init. Um, there's three routines in every kernel module. Device driver, file system module, every kernel module has three routines in Solaris. Underbar init, underbar finny, underbar info. They all have to have these names. Underbar init, the main thing it has to do is call mod install. Mod install uh, is used Basically, the dynamic linker looks for a function called underbar init. If it doesn't find one, it says, screw you, I can't, I can't load you into the kernel. And if it does find one, it calls it. And as far as the driver is concerned, it has to call mod install. Mod install basically will link in, help the dynamic linker link in the, the driver. And that's all I'm going to go into that. But you have to call that mod install. The DDI soft state routines that are shown here Man it depends on whether you want to manage the state or you want to let the framework manage it for you. Here, this driver lets the framework manage it for it. 
underbar finny basically undoes what you do in underbar init. So the mod, mod remove function is the flip side of the mod install function. Underbar info, here's, here's underbar info and they all look alike. Call mod info and that's it. Okay, attach function. Um, okay, so the attach function, you notice it gets passed in one of these dev info structures and a command. There's two basic commands, attach and resume. I'm only going to talk about attach here. So resume is for hot plug, uh, dynamic reconfiguration, that sort of thing. And attach, uh, here we allocate uh, an instance of the state structure and the instance uh, value here, the instance number is basically uh, given to us from the dev info. So instance numbers are not necessarily starting at zero and they are not necessarily consecutive. So you could have instance zero, instance five, instance six, instance 2000. Um, so you can't, there's no guarantee of any kind of uh, contiguousness about instance numbers. Um, so you get the instance number, you allocate state for the particular instance that's being attached. So this routine gets called for each instance of the device. And we, once we've allocated the state, we return a pointer to it. And the main thing we have to do in this routine, if we want users to be able to use the device, <coughs> is create my, uh, do this DDI create minor node. And the DDI create minor node um, will make a file visible in the slash device's name space. Uh, this particular device is creating a character file. I haven't talked about the difference really between character and block files, but we'll get to that in a minute. So here's attach. Uh, DDI report dev basically is going to print out a message on the console about the device being attached and we return success. Now, the Detach side basically undoes whatever was hap happened in the attach side. Maybe I better back up for a second because there's a couple other things I should mention. Normally with real hardware devices, the attach function will also map registers. It may set up for DMA or may do some preliminary setup for DMA. It will add any register interrupt handlers with the system. Um, and it usually will also reset the device and possibly uh, tell the device, okay, I'm ready to go. You can start giving me stuff or I'm going to start sending you stuff. All right, so detach, you undo everything you didn't attach. Open. This is not very interesting and could have been null dev. The, this open routine basically doesn't do anything. Um, uh, and I, I want to mention that the open, not open page in 9e does give you a description of what the arguments are, what kinds of stuff you, you're supposed to do in open, possible return values, zero is basically success, non-zero is an error number, and um, yes, let's go on. Um, here's the read routine and the write routine. Now, the way these two routines work, um, read and write on this device will succeed, but they'll always return zero bytes read or zero bytes written because we don't do any update of any data structure. The UIO structure, which is the second argument that's passed in, needs to be updated to indicate that um, how many bytes were read or written. And there's a routine called UIO move that uh, does the update of this data structure for you. And also copies between uh, buffer or device buffer or buffer in memory and user's address space. Um, so this particular driver, like I said, it, it doesn't do anything but it does it correctly, um, although read and write return zero always. Okay, uh, generally your driver will have, may have a .com file. Um, the .com file would have properties for the device and you could put debug flags in here. You could put, I don't know, different things that you want to make it kind of tunable. You can put into the, the .com file. Um, I think what you're going to find is that uh, um, with the uh, networking stuff in particular, um, my impression is they're moving more and more away from this and more and more into doing the tuning by explicitly using DLADM, which I think actually isn't a bad idea. But here, um, pseudo devices have to have a .com file. 
because otherwise the system decides that the device doesn't physically exist. Um, but PCI devices don't actually need them, although a lot of them do. Um, so here's just an example. You specify the name of the device and the parent uh, in the device tree. So the parent here is a pseudo parent. Okay, to build the driver, you can use uh, C, uh, Sun's compiler or you can use GCC. And uh, the important thing here, um, you see that depending on whether you're 32-bit or 64-bit, there's slightly different flags. Um, a gentleman during the actual talk asked about, uh, uh, actually said that using the optimizer may be not a good idea until you've done, you've gotten your debugging pretty far along. And I don't know, I, I, I actually think that you, I, I use the optimizer all, all the time. I understand what he's saying, but yeah, I, what, I, what I don't want to do is not use the optimizer, get everything fixed, and then use the optimizer and find bugs. I'd rather just start from the beginning. So um, an, issue is, uh, an issue is that the debugging is all done in assembler, and um, so if you've got optimization turned on, it can be difficult to map it back to the C, but this is discussed later. Um, anything else I want to mention here? Well, so basically you, you compile with minus C to get a .o file or .o files here. I'm going to get two files, foo.o and bar.o. And then you, um, you create a relocatable object um, from the .o files here. The relocatable object is called foobar. That's going to be the driver name. Um, if uh, foobar needed to use uh, gld, which is basically uh, for the for NIC drivers, um, GL, GLD is a module in the kernel called the Mac module, and um, you need you need to tell the linker that you have a dependency on the Mac module, because otherwise, what will happen is when you try to load FooBar, when the, and if the Mac module is not in the kernel and you load FooBar, uh, the the linker will say, "I've got all these references, I don't know what they are," because the Mac module isn't there. The minus, D, minus uppercase n miss slash mac here, what it's doing is basically telling the linker that if you load foobar, foobar depends on miss slash mac, and you need to load mac as well. So it gets rid of the unresolved references, automatically loads the mac module if it's not already loaded. Okay, so once you've, you've built your driver, you put the .com file in user kernel DRV, you put the driver itself in user kernel DRV or user kernel DRV AMD64 or user kernel DRV Spark V9. That's where the relocatable mo uh, module goes. And a trick that uh, you want to do, especially if you're early on in development, um, a problem you can run into is if you have a bug in your attach function or your underbar init function, uh, your bug can cause the system to panic, and when the system comes back up, it'll try to load your driver, which will cause your system to panic. And when your system, okay, so what you want to do to get around this, uh, one way to do this, a simple way, is just put the driver in temp, in, in slash temp, and then create a symbolic link. That way, if the system panics because of a bug in an it or attach, when the system comes back up, the driver is gone, and you can actually uh, make forward progress and try to fix your bug. Okay, so once you've got everything done, you run this uh, dry, the command eight add underbar drv and specify the module name foobar here. And what you want to get back is a prompt. Anything else is an error. You only get one error. It will say successfully loaded, failed to attach. Doesn't matter what the actual problem is. That's the error message you will get. If you get this message, look in var ADM messages because usually there's more information in the console output about why it wouldn't load. If you get a prompt back to add drive, congratulations, your driver's installed. Now, now you can start the really fun part of debugging because that'll be what happens next. You'll test it and it'll crash. Except for, of course, the people that are in this audience, right? Okay, so. Um, Okay, so testing the driver. Um, 
you know, there's something missing in this while true loop. Uh, really, what you want to do is um, add drive, uh, write to the device, read from the device, do any ioctals that the device supports, and then rem drive, and put that in a loop. The rem drive is missing here. Put that in a loop and let it run for overnight or a couple of weeks while you take a vacation because you wrote a, wrote a driver, and then come back and make sure everything's still okay on your system. Okay. Now, the device tree, uh, I mentioned you can see with PRT comp, you can also look at it with LS minus L uppercase R. And if you really want to get into what the heck is in the dev info, this opaque data structure, you can do this with MDB minus K. Um, here's a way to look at it. Why you'd want to do that, well, let's just say that it could happen in, dur during debugging, um, although generally I've not had a use for it. Um, by the way, if, if the device is not in the device tree, whether or not you've got a driver or not, if the device is not in the device tree, the kernel, as far as the kernel is concerned, the device doesn't exist. All right. And we'll go a little bit further here. Nope. Okay, so this uh, page here, wait, did we do this already? Did, is this where we were? Did we get here? Are we done? Yeah, I think we're, 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 that's it. Okay. That's it. Good. Are there any questions? <laughs>